Greetings, welcome back. In the previous lecture, we created our project, just set up a brand new one, and we saved our scene, we named it Store, and we also added to our scene one node, a panel node, and you can see it up here on the right. And now that we've gotten our project to this point, let's go ahead and add a label for the money that we'll just show right up here in the top, and that's gonna show the money, and we'll quickly get it so that we can update that in this lecture with some GD script. So we can come up here once again, hit the plus, and it remembered that I had already typed label in before, but I can type in label again, or just search down here through the nodes to find it if you like. So all of the controls are listed. You just pick the ones you need, click create, and now we got an object here you can see and I can drag it out using these handles, make it a little bigger. I'm going to use my scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in, and you'll see there's nothing here yet. And it's because we haven't typed any text in our label. When you have an object selected, over here on the right is an inspector tab. And you can see here in our inspector tab that we have all these properties. And I'm going to click the text property here, like that and type in hello world. So we'll do a hello world label. I'm going to hit enter, save it, and it says hello world in there. And I'm going to align it in the center. And so this is where we're going to put our money. And I'm not much of a hello world person, so we're going to quickly change this out once we run it with a script. So I'm going to run it one time so we can see how this works. When I click to run it says no main scene has ever been defined, select one. And it says you can change it later in the project settings under the application category. So let's go ahead and select our store as our main scene and hit open and we'll see it run and there's our hello world just like that. Now obviously we want to have the money here and we're going to want our money stored in a variable and we want to use GD script, of course, for our language in, in this course. I'm going to go ahead and add a script to our panel to keep our money. So I come up here to panel, and on the top right corner here is a little icon where it says attach a new or existing script for the selected node. So I click this, and we have a, a little panel come up where we can attach a node script. The language is going to default to GD script, which is what we want. We want to inherit from panel because that's where we're putting our script. And we'll just use the default template just so you can see what it looks like. We're going to keep all of these settings, just all the defaults. And here you can see where it's actually going to store our GD script. And this is the actual file that it's getting stored in. So we click create. And you can see the initial default script come up. Everything that has this pound sign is a comment. And I'm going to assume that you have probably programmed before. Like 95% of you know a little bit about programming. But I am going to also assume that I've got beginners. So I'm going to explain everything. Even if this is your very first programming course, you can follow along. Obviously, like all of my courses, you can expect to learn everything from one course, so supplement your material. But we're going to go pretty slow here at first, so even if you're new, you're going to understand GD script, because I'm assuming for a lot of people, this is your first GD script course, possibly. Full length course, at least. So here we got the comments, just like we would in Python with the pound sign. So you can ignore all these. Uh, comments and I can get rid of the one here for process. I'm going to get rid of that one. I'll leave the one for the ready because this right here, everything that runs inside this ready runs when the game starts up. This is just like a start method inside of um, Unity. So anything that you put inside of here is going to run. So what we can do is we can use this to set our label right here, our money label. So I'm going to, first of all, rename this money label by clicking here and typing 
money label. So we have a name for it. And notice when I clicked here, it automatically, we're back here looking at our, our uh, object here on the screen. And if we want to look at our script, we can come back up here. You can see that right at the top, there's a, a script little icon and it says script and you can click here or you can click over here on the right and click on that little icon there and that'll take you back to the script. So now that we have our money label here, let's go ahead and see how we can actually set it right from script. So I can come right in here and already and when the game starts up I can say money label with a dollar sign reference it and notice how it automatically finds it here with IntelliSense so it recognizes the objects over here in the scene from within your editor right here the built-in text editor so I can select it right there or I can type it out or I can hit tab like that and that'll select whatever I have in the IntelliSense there and then I can type a, a dot and you can see we still have some IntelliSense, which is kind of nice. And we want to pick up the text is what we want to do to set the text property. So I can do this, and we'll just hard code zero, zero dollars. We don't have any money yet. Now, like strings in other languages, we use quotes to wrap our text. And you can see that we're setting the text property here. So let's go ahead and run it. Very simple. And now instead of the money that we had in here, our hello world that we had before, we have zeros. Well, that's not really good enough. This is just a text. We want to store this money in a variable, right? So as you can see up here, class member variables go here, for example. So we're extending the panel class, just something that you just have to know. It's like, you know, like uh, your subclassing uh, is a term that we use in object-oriented programming. But fortunately, you don't have to concern yourself with a lot of these details. Just know that this gives you all the functionality of the panel, all the things that it can do and all the properties that it has and so forth come, come with this. And you can reference them and see them here on this panel. When you click on it, you can see all of the properties here that go along with this panel. So let's jump back to our script again and I'm going to create a variable for our money. So I say VR money and I can actually assign it a value here equal to zero. So I can go ahead and just assign it a value here and then instead of referencing this by hand or hard-coded I would say I can reference it here with money. Now if I try to do this now, let's see what happens when I run this. And we get our first error. And I did it on purpose because you need to see how to handle errors. Down here in the debugger that came up, you'll see it says invalid set index text on base label with value of type int. Like what happens in so many languages, we can't take an integer right here that gets defined this is an integer value and store it here as text and you can see that money shows there is zero so while this is running I can go ahead and still change this code and I'll just show you for example I could just put quotes around this which isn't what we want but if I relaunch here with this re restart you'll see that we get the value it's just stored as a string which is not what we want we want to store this as an integer so basic variable understanding that's a string this is an integer our var is something that just you have to know about GD script it is how you define a variable and then at this point we can change this over to a string using str money just like that and this converts our integer value here, money, into a string so that we can show it in the text. And so if I run again, now we get our zero. And we can simply put a dollar sign in front of it if we so choose by using quotes, dollar sign, quotes. And you can use single quotes or double quotes here just like with Python and GDScript will not care. And then just use a plus to put these together like so. So the plus, just like you would add two strings together in other languages, uh, Python, it works exactly the same. 
You can do that in GD script as well. And this just adds this string to the string that we made here with money. And we can get rid of the pass. Now pass is just, you can use this if you just want a stub inside of a function. Just means don't do anything. But we can get rid of that. Just clean it up a little bit. So let's run again. And you'll see that now our zero is there. And with that, we're going to wrap this lecture up. It's rather simple. We didn't do a whole lot. We we're starting out a little slow. We ha but we do have our learned how to make variables. We learned how to make string variables. As you can see up here is a string variable as well. We made it with quotes around it at first so we could see how to display it here in the text. We also learned how to reference nodes over here in the scene. And then I was able to use this dollar sign notation and then the label for money label over here to reference our label and set the text to it the way we wanted to dynamically. So even though it was a, a, a quick lecture and we didn't accomplish a lot, if you're brand new to GD script and brand new to Godot, this uh, is something you're just going to want to practice with, just throwing out a label, setting some text. So now in the next lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to make a button so that when we click the button, we can add to our money and update the text and we'll get to see actually how to send an event from a button or what in, they call in Godot a signal. So lots more fun stuff coming up. Very excited uh, to share Godot with you. So see you in the next lecture.